I consider the matrix to be any illusory, deceptive programming that points away from the spiritual truth that I am fulfilled. Temptation that only appears to point away from reality, which is in a complete state of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. This is what I would like to discuss with you today. The real way to escape the matrix, minus the gimmicks that only deceptively promise escape, yet are part of the illusion. To discuss this in a way that I trust is beneficial for you, I titled today's conversation mind map, Give Up to God. Today's conversation is also inspired by Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady. Today we explore Lesson 8, which is Spiritual Understanding, hence the title, Give Up to God. Now, why would I title the mind map this way? Well, she says, All the teachings of Jesus were for the purpose of leading individuals into this consciousness of their oneness with the Father. He had to begin at the external individual because people then, as now, were living mostly in external things and teach them to love their enemies, to do good to others, and so forth. In other words, he told them how they might find the kingdom of heaven within themselves, the kingdom of love, of power, of life. As we've been discussing, as you have been created in the perfect image of the Creator, your true nature is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. On what appears as the journey to manifesting your vision, you experience unconditional love, unconditional happiness, unconditional peace, unconditional bliss, unconditional fulfillment. And by that I mean, don't allow yourself to be conditioned by appearances because on the journey to manifesting the vision, you actually experience that when you release the control, release the need to attach to appearances, you appear to remain blissful, experiencing happiness unconditionally, blissfully, and fulfilled peacefully. You experientially understand physically, emotionally, mentally, what it is meant by kingdom of heaven within yourself, the kingdom of love, of power, of life. For me, the spiritual understanding continued to be experienced. In other words, I had deeper degrees of understanding by taking every opportunity that appeared to release the need to control, give up to God. And certainly I would experience it. So how would I describe the experience? Well, I mentioned that in 2017, I made flow a priority. Because when I took an inventory of my life up until that point, I discovered that where I was the most joyous, happiest, loving fulfilled, productive, things were appearing to go my way, harmonious relationships, was when I was in flow state. I discovered flow state through the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, where he described the experience perfectly. What he also described was a deep state of flow, which he calls autotelic where actions and awareness become one. That, to me, was an experience of what she says, realizing the oneness with the Father, actions and awareness being one. So prior to 2017, I wasn't making flow a priority. So there would be, we could say, periods of appearing to control unnecessarily, not giving up to God unnecessarily forcing, trying to manipulate this world to get a result. And upon deeper introspection, I realized that what I was doing was I was seeking. I was seeking for love. I was seeking for happiness. I was seeking for peace, for fulfillment, for bliss. When true nature is 
love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. True nature is, I am, equals, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Simply I am. Being as I am, I describe that as oneness with the Father. Now, experientially, as I may flow a priority in 2017, what I noticed was that my actions flowed authentically and naturally more and more so. And it was apparent if I experienced at time what I refer to as flow restrictors, which is really identification to beliefs that suggest in mind thoughts and also emotional relatability to experiences that are related to those beliefs that suggest separation from God, which are illusions, because there is no separation from God. The illusory experiences of separation were generated by these illusory beliefs where I appeared to be controlling, forcing. And so what did I do to release these beliefs? Well, as we discussed recently, I'll link in the description to the video, by being still. By being still, I give up to God. And the flow restrictor was released. Essentially, I was throttling the flow. And no shame in condemnation. What is being proposed here is that there are many opportunities to release identification to the illusory beliefs, the beliefs of separation from God, from which the individual plays out matrix-based programming, unnecessary forcing, controlling, manipulating, pointing fingers to the external, generating unnecessary conflict. That is a result of identification to the untrue beliefs of separation, what I call the matrix programming which are illusions, illusions that result in appearing as the individual identifying inharmoniously with appearances. For example, practically speaking, let's say an individual is doing a business deal and they would like that business deal to be harmonious, mutually beneficial. Yet the prospective client seems to appear to not be interested in doing the business deal. Now the individual business owner may think, this might mean that the business will fail or they're not good enough. In other words, the illusory beliefs are revealed, illusory beliefs of separation. They may suggest to themselves, which are confessions of I am not. I am not, such as not love, not happiness, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment, which are clearly untrue, as I am is the complete autosuggestion, which implies love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. By being still and releasing identification to the illusory untrue thoughts that suggest not happiness, not love, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment. By being still in the presence of God, mind is purified from those untrue beliefs. As the individual allows their emotions to be released, they also give up to God. Realize true nature, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. As these untrue beliefs are released, what remains? True nature remains. And that is what she's referring to. So she says, all the foregoing lessons have been stepping stones leading up to the point where the individual may realize that ever abiding inner presence of the Most High God. You know, I used to read James Allen's As a Man Thinketh over and over again. And he concluded the book with peace, be still. Peace, be still. It is by being still we understand 1 Corinthians 6.19. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. By being still, the individual gives up to God. 
They give up the untrue illusions of separation. They release identification to the illusory programming, the matrix programming. And they realize the kingdom of love, of power, of life. Experientially, what does it appear as? It appears as actions and awareness experienced as one, as let's say in conversations with people, your words flow. You speak authentically, and as you speak, you are not seeking approval, validation, or confirmation of the fact that you are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And so the conversations in personal relationships flow. There's an interesting book called The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. She speaks about power, presence, and warmth. Power being direction. As the individual gives up to God, and by that it means specifically to be as I am, they manifest the true power of God wherever they appear. And by that I mean it is infused in everything that they do. Their creative expressions, their conversations, whatever they do. And they authentically do it. And many benefit greatly from the products or services they create, if they're entrepreneurs, if they're artists, their artistic expressions, by simply being as I am. Everything happens ideally automatically. Everything flows naturally from living spiritual understanding as they have given up the illusions of separation that were only a result of the illusory beliefs that were clearly untrue as they were implying not happiness, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment. So thus they gave up to God and they remain as I am. Another way I like to say this is I relax into knowing that I am, simply being as I am. And so for me, this was naturally what arose more and more so. And for more details of how I did this, I put together the Flow-Based Life series, which I'll link to in the description, and I trust you'll enjoy that. So, all in harmony appear from understanding. She says the individual may have been living in the external of their being and have believed themselves to be cut off from God, which is illusory, it's untrue. As mentioned, if the individual believes that they are separate from God, they generate illusory experiences, we can say as a result of identification to illusory realities, generating further separation from God. There's only one true reality of God. And that true reality for you, created in the perfect image of the Creator, via the God-Self concept, as we discussed in Sunday's video, is experienced effortlessly through giving up to God, releasing the control, as creation is naturally in a complete state of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. She says, your first step after coming to yourself like the prodigal son is to say as he did, I will arise and go to my father, to turn your thoughts away from the external seeming toward the central and real, to know intellectually that you are not cut off from God and that God forever desires to manifest God within you as your present deliverance from all suffering and sin. Suffering is the result of illusions of separation from God, which is why in many ancient teachings they would speak about how seeking for external love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment may result in suffering. And so suffering ceases to the individual that realizes that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I relax into knowing that I am. I rest assured in knowing that I am, experientially. This particular practice, which again is being still, releasing 
the need to control, allowing the emotions to be released, allowing the thoughts that are untrue to be released, purifies the subconscious mind from the untrue beliefs that generate the illusory experiences that are not from the premise of truth. For more detail on this, I'll link to two videos that I released recently discussing the seven-day mental and emotional diet, a dual approach, as some may be more identified with particular thoughts, through which they shame or condemn themselves for experiencing emotions a particular way, which again, as we see clearly now, it is the result of illusions of separation-based beliefs. All of these may be released through those two videos. I'll link in the description to them. So the simple practice of applying what's being discussed here is on the journey to manifesting your vision, whatever it may be, ideal harmonious relationship, entrepreneurial success, whatever it is that you desire. Take the opportunities that are presented along the way to give up to God, to release the unnecessary control. If they present themselves, where do they present themselves? The way I describe the opportunities presented is if ever I feel that I need to control, force, or manipulate, that is a moment of opportunity. In that moment, be still. Abide as I am. Be as I am. No separation between you and the Father. By being still in the presence of God, you experience true nature. You understand experientially what I mean when I say the God-Self concept, as we discussed in Sunday's video. I'll link in the description to that. Perfect concept of self. As when embodied to higher and higher degrees, the individual experiences unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, regardless of appearances. For example, in business, if the prospect appears to want to do the deal with you, unconditional happiness. If the prospect appears to not want to do the deal with you, unconditional happiness. You are not phased because truly you exist beyond the appearances. You are not phased by appearances. It's only illusions of separation, the untrue beliefs, that result in the individual allowing themselves to appear to be phased by appearances. Now this is a practice one that you get better at through practice. So we can intellectually think about what she is pointing to, which can be helpful for starting the journey. Yet ultimately, we practice this and understand it at an experiential level. She says, sometimes the individual will be almost overcome by questions and doubts arising in their mind when they are looking in vain for results which again is seeking externally for what they already have, seeking externally for fulfillment. Rather, they already have it. So we see clearly now that this is an illusion. It is clearly a result of what we can refer to as matrix programming, which is unreal, not real, illusory. If the individual continues to identify with this programming, it can lead to suffering and sin, as she referred to, which is the illusion of separation. That's what sin means. Illusion of separation from God and true nature, which is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So we could say sin is missing the mark of knowing true nature, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and appearing to seek for love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, externally from the identification to an untrue belief that it is found external. Rather than realizing that we experience happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment with wonderful relationships, with wonderful hobbies, we experience it with, yet the source is within. So once we realize that the source of happiness is within, the individual gives up to God and then practically speaking experiences love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment with or without the appearances 
appearing a particular way, in which the individual says, if they appear this particular way, then happiness. If not, then not happiness. The spiritual fact is they experience experiential happiness more and more so as they realize that they exist beyond the conditioning that they may have formed in mind to appearances. And also, interestingly, happiness, love, peace, bliss, fulfillment-based experiences appear more and more so as they have released the illusions of separation. This has been my experience as well. In the earlier stages, I would create auto-suggestions that would affirm symbols of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and they would appear. And then I made flow a priority. And then I realized that while I was making flow a priority, these symbols, the outer appearances of God, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, would appear more so without even me imagining them to appear prior. Like Steve Jobs said in his commencement speech, like in all matters of the heart, you experience it, you know. That is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. These appearances appear spontaneously, spontaneous love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And also what I would notice is the illusions of condition, the illusions of separation, conditioning would disappear more and more so that I would experience spontaneous wherever I appear, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And when I did imagine things that were symbols of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, they would appear easier and faster. So it is certainly true then what was being pointed to in the beginning. Let's go back to this part here. She said, all the teachings of Jesus were for the purpose of leading the individual into this consciousness of the oneness with the Father. He had to begin at the external individual because people then as now were living mostly in external things, which is an illusion. It's illusory to live in external things. All everlasting love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, true unconditional love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment is available now. It's here now. Where is it? You don't need proof, validation, confirmation. It's here now. You feel it. If you take a moment to be still, if thoughts that are untrue, that suggest not love, not happiness, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment, arise in mind, they are clearly untrue. They only appear to disappear. And so we allow them to disappear. If strong emotions arise, we allow them to release without labeling them inharmoniously from beliefs of separation, as in the individual is not love, not happiness, not peace, not bliss, not fulfillment for experiencing emotions. Allow the emotions to be released. As the untrue thinking identification is released, as the emotions are allowed to be released, reality is experienced. We experientially feel love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. We have successfully given up to God. And as we continue this practice, you can dedicate moments each day I do the Vipassana meditation where I experienced this. I'll link in the description to the Vipassana guided meditation. And also as mentioned, this can be done in relation to what appears where the individual may be suggesting to themselves illusions of separation, which can reveal identification to the matrix programming, which is illusory. Those are moments of opportunity to release identification to the illusions, the untrue, the illusory realities, to experience the one true reality of God, thus give up the false illusions to God and experience your true nature. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I give up to God as I know that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. As I remain as I am, it is crystal clear I operate automatically and ideally from the premise of truth, manifesting 
appearances of God as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, based appearances, in harmonious relationship with environments, information, people, to manifest heaven on earth with increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses perceive. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.